Martin and I have today with me, assisting me is Karen Weir. If you do have any issues during the session today, you can use your uh, questions panel or chat panel and we will attend to those. Karen will be assisting me with checking everyone's um, being able to hear okay and that we are answering questions as we go. So let's have a look at what we are covering. As I said, your questions panel is in, in your right hand side of your um, go to webinar area and you simply just need to type in a question. As we go throughout the presentation today, I'll probably stop every 10 minutes or there about to allow you to ask questions at the point in time um, that I will go and answer. Some of them I may not answer at that direct point in time because I know I will be covering that in, in the subsequent section. So by the end of the session I hope to have answered uh, all your questions and if I don't know the answer I will go and seek the answer for you and uh, distribute the information. So that's how we'll run with the uh, housekeeping. So let's have a quick look at our agenda today. So we're going to look at PDF docs, or what is PDF docs. We'll have a look at what's new. So everything that we're looking at will be focused from an end user's perspective. We'll learn the basics and we'll cover off the three different various document modes. We'll also look at what happens in the upgrade process, um, how you can convert a advanced docs version 3 um, documents into your new PDF docs version. And finally, we'll make sure that you have all the supporting information that you have with the downloads of the software to ensure that you have a successful transition to the new PDF docs. So let's have a quick look at our journey. Previously, we've known PDF docs as advanced docs. We've had a relationship with the company DocsCorp for about nine years. DocsCorp's been going into that product called PDF docs for around 10 years. So the Reckon Company has the distribution rights for advanced docs as it was known then, now known as PDF docs, to the accounting sector. With the rebranding with the Reckon Group, we also have a Reckon docs um, application in our product suite which is the online corporate secretarial um, registrations here in Australia. So one of the things that we have been delaying is getting the release information and the rebranding from advanced docs to PDF docs in the most expedient time manner that we could possibly do. So with that, we have worked with DocsCorp and suggested that we don't need to redo documentation rebranding, which will make it quicker for us to send out the new versions and new update releases to you directly. So we've now known advanced docs to be PDF docs going forward. It's the same product. We're just now looking at PDF docs version 4. So there's an upgrade. The previous version of advanced docs was version 3.3. .3. So what's in the new version 4? You'll see that there's a completely new design. So the back end has also been re-engineered for improved speed. And overall about 80% of the product looks different. The more speed has improved the usability. We also have much more um, text editing tools and annotation tools. And part of the restructure to give you more speed and the design layouts has meant that there is a file restructure. So there's a back end change to the way that the design works. This webinar is probably not designed to go through all the technical back-end installation configuration requirements. I will touch on them briefly as we go through, um, but they are in further information in your technical documents. So rather than just talk about all the features, we're going to go straight in and we'll start having a look at the new PDF Docs version 4. So one of the first things that we'll notice, um, if I go into a Word document and I'm looking in my Word or an Office document, you'll see now in your Office toolbar there is now a new um, ribbon called DocsCorp. So DocsCorp is our um, associate company that produces PDF Docs. You'll see in the new ribbon that there is options within your Office toolbar to go and open the documents in PDF docs, email, save as a PDF, 
save in your document management system or save into Reckon APS. So there is a way in Office that you can use the direct indication as you did with Advanced Docs. Previously it was under Advanced Docs, it's now under the Docs Corp ribbon. As with any program, if you are wanting to print something to Advanced Docs, you would always hit Print and select the printer. So if I wasn't in Word or Excel and I was in my accounting package or my um, tax return package, I can now pick Docs Corp PDF printer as the default printer excuse me, to print to PDF Docs. Previously it was called Advanced Docs Printer, so there is a name change here. So once I've selected that as my, def um, my printer for whatever document I'm printing, it will go off and by default it will send that to PDF Docs in the first document mode that I'm going to talk about, which is single document mode. You'll see here now this is the complete new look and feel of the PDF application called PDF Docs. There is three modes of the application and what I'm showing you here is the single document mode. So one of the features of the installation process with PDF Docs is you can now replace Adobe Reader as your default reader with PDF Docs. So what we're looking at here is a read-only um, Adobe Reader version, if you like, of a single PDF. If I open up any document on my machine, I'm just going to say no to that, I'm just going to close that for a second. If I open up any document on my machine, and I look at my files, anything now that is a .pdf, I've associated now PDF docs as the default reader for those PDF documents. And you'll notice that there is a new icon that's changed on the left hand side. So it does mean you don't need to install Adobe Reader on your machine or have different compatibility issues with different versions of Adobe Reader. These are the documents that do come with part of the installation and download. I'll double click and open on the Getting Started Guide. You will notice that when I double click on a single PDF, the default reader now is PDF Docs. I have the document, it is a secured PDF. And you'll see in the top right hand side, you'll see the word single document. So it's opening up in the single document mode. So let's have a look at the new single document mode. So in itself, we can see that we have a navigation pane. In this example, it will show us the bookmarks. We can search for something in that PDF document. And if the document's quite large, you will also see on your navigation view on your left-hand side that you have a pages view. So you can turn your pages on. If the document that you're previewing had comments attached to it, you'll see that there is a comment view on the right-hand side here. This document doesn't have any comments, so I can minimise. Across the top of the screen, you'll see that there is a new ribbon approach. This is the new look and feel of PDF Docs. Everything is at your fingertips using the Office 2013 approach of using the ribbons. You'll see the main items that you have here in this, the home bar are to do with saving. You can save it to the computer, your document management system, email, preview, clipboard, send to project, which I'll explain a little bit further, or export. So these are some of the home home items. As we step through this, you'll have some basic annotation of tools available directly to you when you're pre previewing your PDF document. So this is a new feature. You'll also see that we have new stamps. I'll go into that in a little bit further in a minute. We've got basic drawing and we've got the simple zooming and editing, finding and searching. So that's in our home ribbon. Up the top here you have what we call quick access toolbars. So anything that you want to add as a quick access toolbar, you can do that by adding it to your toolbar. Excuse me. We go across the page here, we have after our home page, we have our review, which has further tools for your annotation. And these have all been improved and highlighted as we go through as well. We also have shapes. 
the editing area, if your document that you're previewing was not secured, you would have access to editing. In this example, it's secured, so it's locked out. As is the protect or the security, because that is also a secure document. And then finally, you've got your view tab. So everything here is sort of presented to you in a new way, which makes things easy to do. The other options that you have within your single document view is that you still have the ability to ch to change the order of documents in your um, drop and field. That will work again if it was a non-secured document. So the drag and drop and moving items around is made a lot quicker. And you also have your right click options. Again, they'll come up with a non-secure document. The other item just in terms of navigation before we move across is we have the single document mode here. You also have your help. So there's a question mark item on the top of the screen. And there's also access to an e-learning system. The e-learning system will require you to obtain a, an additional license key. The license key will be done from DocsCorp directly and it is set on a, a user basis. The e-learning So that's just our new look of what the the, um, the navigation pane looks like. I'm going to close out of this single document view. I'm going to now open the second document mode and go through some more of those functions. So what we've looked at so far is anything that's a PDF. By default in the installation you have an option to, to make your Adobe Reader be replaced with PDF docs as the default reader. By default, when you open a single PDF, it will open in the single document mode. That allows you to edit documents in straight away in that PDF. If I open up PDF docs from either the desktop, and you'll see the new icon here on the desktop, or go start programs, the default mode of opening up PDF docs is in our second mode view, which is called Organizer view. And you'll see on the top right hand side it says Organizer project. So you'll see the Organizer view. I have a screenshot. I have a very similar look and feel to the way the single document view opened. There is a few extra items in the output options in my home screen, but essentially I have the same home toolbar. If I click across to the review toolbar, I have the same items available as single document mode. I have all my editing options available to me in the organizer because I don't have any secure documents. The addition that I see down here on my navigation page, I'll go back to home, is that I can see all my documents that I have put into the organizer. So I have two documents in this case. I have one that was called advanced doc which is just this print preview that I can see on the right hand side. So what we can see in the right hand side is something that you would be familiar with with advanced docs. So the functionality is still very similar. The way that it's laid out and navigated is different. So the pages view that we had down here in the organizer is available here. And then I had my document titles. So that's now our navigation page and our pages view and the editor is on the right. Some of you may have worked with multiple organizers. So in this example here, you can see, I can also zoom that in for you, that in this example in my old advanced docs, I had an organizer and I had another project and another project and I had a binder project. So now that we have improved the back end, the speed of opening advanced docs is improved by only having one organizer open at a time. You'll see the name of the organizer at the top of your screen here called organizer with an extension 
www.ecdc.pop. So if I wanted to have a look at other organisers, I would go to the File menu. And this opens what we call the Backstage view. And I can open recent items, which will include up to 25 items here, of recently used either single PDF documents or other organisers. I can open organisers from my organisers folder, which is where the default installation would happen. So you'll see in the back end, in my organisers, I have my default called organiser.pop and I also have some other projects, project two, three and a person group. So I'm going to open that one. What you'll find is that you can have multiple organisers open. So I can see in the background I've got an a person group organiser and I have the default organiser called organiser.pop. So I might just stop here for a minute and allow you guys to ask some questions before I go further into the organisers. So I do have a question here from Anthony. Sorry Anthony, I was supposed to leave your name uh, as anonymous. But um, I have a, a question here that says, can you merge documents? The idea of using PDF docs is the ability for you to merge documents together. So in the organiser view, if I go back and just highlight this organiser, you can see here I have one document called advanced docs and the next document that I have is just called a case study. So I can also import another document into this view. So if I import, I can go and grab something that was recently used or I can grab something uh, from, a, from any um, section. So I can add these documents to my list and the whole point of what I want to do here is I want to merge these documents together and create one PDF at the end of the day. So that's what we're doing by building up the documents here and if I preview what I'm looking at, it's adding actually adding these three documents into one single document. Close that for a minute. It also allows me to use the pages view to go and move particular pages around in the document. So I can move that page from page three down to page two. Okay. So you can massage and rearrange the information that you have in your documents. Okay. So that's the point of what we're looking at here with, with merging documents. I have another question that will talk about the integration with other document management systems. So I'll go through that very shortly. And the other question that I have here, if in single document mode you choose to move to a project, how do you get it into the organiser view? So if I come back and I have opened a document, by default when I open a document, you'll see here it's in the single document view. So how do I move this document here that's in single document view into one of my organisers? I can use the send to project and because I have those two projects open, on my home bar I can see I can move that to a person pop. Do you want to close it? Select yes if I want to do that. So if I move that I can now see that that single document has now moved that ELD into this particular organiser project. So you can move documents. You can also add documents instead of using the import function, you can drag and drop documents. So if I put that one open there, I can add another document by simply just dragging and dropping it into my documents page here to keep building up my single PDF copy. One of the questions that we are commonly asked is, is every time that I print a new document and select the DocsCorp PDF printer, it will print by default into single document mode. Now you may have created an organiser project and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And rather than printing it to a single document mode and then having to export those documents or send them to projects, 
you can have a look at your settings within the um, the PDF docs. So I'm going to save that document, come back to it later. So my organizer project here, under the file menu, we have certain options that change the behavior of the user's um, settings. In your PDF options window, you have general settings. And this is done at the moment on a user basis because I'm logged in as a particular user and I'm going in and changing my options. What you can do, if you have options that you want to roll out as a um, firm-wide or practice-wide setting, you can have a look at the um, technical guides that will show you how that you can replicate what you've done for one user and push that out to all users as the default. So you can do it individually, like I'm showing you here, or you can also copy the settings, which was used to be stored in things called a server.ini file. That has been replaced in this version with a central config file. And so it is able to update and push these changes out. So let's just go through and have a look at our default behavior for PDF option, options in the general tab. So we have just basic default layout and zoom options. What you want to do with your image conversion options, and you can simply just change the drop-down settings. Your Outlook conversions, whether you want to use your Windows name in the header or whether you don't. The Word document conversion options. What you may do is, by default, I think they say do not create bookmarks or hyperlinks. So if you want to be able to use that in Word by having bookmarks and hyperlinks, you will want to change this setting to be able to use that. And then we'll go and have a look at the Docs Corp ribbon further in Word to see how you create and set those up. Now we get down to the print and the import options. I'll come back to the import and open options in a minute. You'll see here the print options. So when processing watch folders or printing documents to the PDF Docs Corp window, the default behavior will open it in a new window in single document mode. If you don't want it to do that, you can import it into an organizer project. So it will go to your default organizer project. Or you can prompt the system to ask you what you want to do with it. I'm going to change my options so the system will ask me what I want to do with it because I may have multiple organisers and I don't want it to go to my default organiser and I want the system to ask me which organiser I want to print my document. Similarly, when I import and open documents, when importing documents, it's going to go into the organiser project or you can ask which project it wants to go to or which document or a binder project. You then have the options of where your default organiser is and what organiser that is. And when opening PDF docs from the shortcuts, open to the default organiser. So there are options that you can change. This one's probably the important one that I've changed here. So if I just press OK and I will close my organisers so that we're back to a clean um, slate. Now when I go in and print a single document or open one of these oh, windows has had a little failure. When I go and open one of these PDF documents, um, when I go, sorry, when I print it, and I use print to PDF docs called printer, so I didn't need to open a PDF, it could have been any document. Instead of going straight into single document mode, it's going to ask me what do I want to do with the document. Do I want to put it into an organiser, which organiser for my recently used, or, or create a new one? So I have the option that's now asking me where I want to put this. So you'll just see that extra prompt come up. So let's go back and have a look at those options again. 
under File Options, our General Options. I change the behaviour of the printing to PDF docs to prompt and ask me what I wanted to do with that. Prompt to send to project options, you can turn those on or off. Save or export, again you can turn on or off. The Adobe Reader or the Acrobat Reader, um, at the moment you can see that I've chosen that to auto detect that the PDF docs um, is there and it will open up PDF Docs as my default reader. Okay. Just trying to check in again with some questions that you may have at this point. Okay. I still haven't got back to your integration yet with Virtual Cabinet. Um, hopefully I've just explained to you how you can print a document straight to your organiser mode by changing your options in here and your general options. And how do I save is your next question. So let's just go run through some of the other options first. So we've looked at the general options. If you're using a digital signature and you want to import digital signatures into documents, then you can turn on which labels you want to appear as part of that process. Our integration area. Now by default, if you've installed the application and you had your practice management software installed on the same machine that you put PDF docs, it would probably auto-detect the, the document management system is using the Reckon APS system. Now if I disable that or remove it, auto-detect off, if I add one in, it will have on the list a, a list of integration options that we mostly work with. So if you're a worksite, HP at worksite or iManage user, you can click that option. If you're using the native document management system with practice management, that is known as the Reckon APS, which used to be called ADM. And if you're a virtual cabinet user, you'll see the virtual cabinet option. So because you have Reckon APS and Virtual Cabinet installed, you will need to change it to Virtual Cabinet um, as part of the process. You can also push that out as part of your general installation process. In my example, I've just got the Reckon APS Practice Management integration turned on. Okay, other options, OCR. There is an additional purchase that you can do to, um, to license the OCR component with PDF Docs, which will then enable you to export documents back into Word, Excel, PDFA. Um, so the optical character recognition will scan the document and allow you to have the different processes here of the different um, output fields. There's different options that you can do for each organiser. Upon closing the organiser, you can delete certain option, options or once you've processed them, you can set that up in here. You still have the same Outlook options um, where you can render PDFs for every email that's attached to prompt you to convert them to PDF, never prompt you or always prompt you. So if it finds a file association that is a um, office document or a TIFF or a GIF or a, a, an image, it will ask you whether you want to convert that to PDF. You can also put exclusions, internal list exclusions, so that if you're sending stuff to certain particular people that you don't want the original document converted to PDF, then you can put them on your exclusion list. Or you can put domain exclusions. So if everyone internally at Reckon is okay to get the Word document as the attachment, then you wouldn't get prompted for that. Um, page displays, save options. Um, you'll notice that each of these organiser projects, they can be saved locally. The organiser projects, which are now .pop files, can be saved on your network location. And you can also associate a .pop or organiser project file with your document management system if you so desire. So it has automatic saving by default every 10 minutes. And the other item that you can do is the concept of watch folders. 
So some of you have multi-function um, devices, scanning devices, and you may have a system where you go to your multi-function device and you say Tanya is going to photocopy or sorry scan um, a document that's worth 10 pages and that scans to a network folder. So it means any time that I set up that network folder and add that to my watch folders, any document that goes into that folder will automatically open up the organiser um, and give you that document straight into PDF docs. So rather than sending it straight to your email, which you then have to print to PDF docs, it shortcuts that process. So let's just go back out of our backstage view here. So we've talked about our options, which is in the backstage view here under options. What are the other things that we see in our file menu? If I click on save, it will save the organizer project. If I click on save as, I have the options here for the particular documents that's in my organiser to save all of this as one single PDF. So that's what I'm doing when I'm going save as. You can see here that I have my Reckon APS as my document integration, uh, document management system. I do have the choice to pick the computer, which I can then scroll down and it will pick up my recently used locations or I can use the browse option. Um, I can also save it to clipboard. You'll also see when I save this as a single PDF document that I have got what documents that I'm, I'm looking at, the file type that I'm saving it as, it's saving it as a collated document or whether I'm saving them as individual documents, so they're my document options. I also have output options, so you can see that you can minimise these things as well as we go through. My output options, so if I want to apply security to the PDF document, then I would apply the irrelevant security. I'll talk about stationary sets and watermarks when we go through. I can apply that to the whole document or I can do it to individual pages, which is something new. So I can go and change those options. I can also look at split and extract. If my PDF document is a rather large file, you can go through and split that by pages or you can split that in megabytes so that you can send that as a, um, a split document so people know where the split ends. Okay. The import function. Import was the, the option that we also saw on the home key where I can import another document into my organiser. I can also import documents by using the drag and drop into the organiser. The drag and drop function or the import function, we were talking about the performance and the speed, you'll find that that has dramatically improved the performance. The overall performance here is, is oh, I would say 10, 15, 20 times quicker than what it used to be. It doesn't have that delay of what you're looking at. Um, I think the other day I was opening up a 200 page document and imported that with quite large graphics and it took about five seconds. On my previous version of advanced stocks that was taking about 55 seconds. So there is some dramatic improvements there. Okay. So what we can do with this particular document that I have got here or this organiser project I've, I've printed out the financials and tax returns for a number of different entities in a large group. And what I'm going to do is I can also add different bookmarks into the document. I can add a bookmark to the current location. I can add a bookmark to an external PDF or a web link. If I put a bookmark to the location, I'm currently here, it will then tell me where that bookmark is. I can then create another bookmark, go here, add another bookmark, current location. Sometimes when you build up your own bookmarks, you also want to be able to have the ability to indent and, and promote your bookmarks. So 
So you have the ability to add those into your documents. That type of functionality adds ease for the user when you create this as a single PDF that you have bookmarks so people can jump quite quickly from one, one spot to the next. If you didn't have the bookmarks, you can also um, add those as bookmarks as well. Um, individual documents, as you've highlighted them, the pages that you'll see for that document will appear down here. If I jump to the next document, it moves to that section so you can see where you're going. One of the nice functions that you can do, um, if I go right click on here, you can now apply page designs to stationary sets and watermarks. So for example, if I wanted to put a confidential item, I can put that just on that particular page without having to do the whole document. Um, so that is a really nice feature that you weren't previously able to do with the previous versions of bookmarks. You can also insert uh, insert pages. You can insert pages from a file or a blank page. And you can design where you put those things. So sometimes you like to have a little set, a section space between one document and the next, then you can do that. Okay. As I said earlier, the right click options that you used to have in the particular page that you're on, you still have that ability with your right click options there. And you also now have the additional items of, of doing the page designs. Stationary sets, if you had them in your previous version of Advanced Docs, you will need to go through the installation notes and configuration guide on how you would apply those into the new version. Same thing if you had your own stamps or, or digital signatures, you would want to import those across. Within our editor view itself, I said that there was some new stamps. So if I click over here to the review tab, you can see that there are new stamps that you can add to the particular document. So if I go down to a section where something maybe need to be signed, I can go down to that particular document and insert a stamp. You'll see there's new stamps and new logos. We have new sign here. With that, I can drag that across, pop that into the document where I want to do that, and use this, the resizing, etc., as before. So you can do those type of steps. You can also add in dynamic stamps. You'll see in here, I think you'll have your last five stamps that you've used. We have dynamic stamps, which are new, which say that uh, if you're using it for an internal review process, you can put the reviewed stamp on there and it will use your Windows username and the time and date stamp of when you reviewed that. You apply that to all pages, delete it, etc., as you were doing before with your annotations, but they're all very sharp and very clean. Okay, comments, same as before, sections, highlight, all of those type of things work as they did before. We just have new editing tools that make it nice and easy to use, very similar to how you would done, um, use that um, with your office ribbons. Everything opens up as you need to use it. Okay, um, if we go back to stamps, we also have protect digital signatures. So if you want to insert a signature field, we can add a digital signature field here. If you're using digital signatures for clients, then you would add that field into this section here. If you're inserting your own digital signatures, you would need to have those purchased from a third party to be able to add those into your document. The other type of things that you can do in your editing tools um, is you can also in your security area is you can search for particular text items. Um, if you've printed something that displays your tax file number or your ABN number and you forgot to hide that when you're printing it and you have confidential information, then you would use the Protect tab to do a search for the item that you want to protect. And we'll go and find the word a person. 
and it will go across, in this case it's going across all my documents and I'm going to check all of those items. I could go through and, and, and scan for those but I'm going to check all of those items and you can see wherever it's found it, it's highlighted that area, it um, highlights me. I'm going to mark these results. and I'm going to apply the change. So it's what it's going to do is going to mark those with a, a black um, cross out of everywhere where the word a person appeared in those documents. Okay, so that's our redaction process of uh, finding and hiding certain items. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to ask some more questions at this point. I will go and check our question pane and see where we're up to with your questions as we're going along. So I think we've now answered how do we integrate with Virtual Cabinet. We went up into the file options and went into our DMS integration section. If there is links within a PDF, can you open the links in the tab? So if the links were in the document, then yes, you should be able to do that. If for whatever reason it hasn't added, you can add the link back by using the bookmarks. One of the reasons why it may not have come across is if you haven't gone into your options area um, and changed, if it came from a link from a Word document, make sure that you have changed your setting here to create the bookmarks and hyperlinks when, when using your custom settings. We have a private cloud question. How does the, the PDF docs work with APS private cloud? Can you install the PDF docs outside the cloud for scanning? Um, if you're scanning something outside the private cloud, it, do, it wouldn't have to be APS private cloud, but any private cloud. You would need to have a license for PDF docs to work, which needs the practice management software to license it. Um, so if you're trying to scan something outside of your cloud structure, it would probably be scanned to a folder, a network folder, and then you would set up your options for your watch folders to go and look for any documents dropped into that network location, which would then you'd be able to open up PDF docs on your cloud to see that, that document. I have another question. Someone is having some issues with importing stamps for part of the signature. Could lock up for a few minutes. Um, why and it happens each time. So that is something that I probably don't have the answer for for you unfortunately this time. Um, we can log that and have a look and uh, get back to you on that specific question. I can't tell you if that's a specific item on your um, installation or whether that has become a general known issue at this point. Okay, we have a question here of how do we highlight non-text or scanned written notes and how do you highlight text in text boxes? The colour always reverts back to yellow. How do you keep the colour that you last picked? I haven't looked at that particular issue. Highlight. Uh, we would also... I've only got documents here that are actually Word documents, so I can't quite answer completely. But you're saying that the, the colour doesn't seem to change. Um, if I come back to that, it, it does seem to change. I think it's just a trick of tabbing off that colour and coming back, um, it, which would save you on that particular item. Okay, good question next. What's our third mode? So we've looked at organise a project as a mode. We've looked at single document mode. The other type of item that you can create, if I go new, so if I was going to create a new organiser or a new project, you will also see that I have the option to create either an organiser or a binder. So some of you may not have used binders before. If I was to create a binder, it would be our third mode. 
I can use a binder project, which means I'm going to create um, a project that has both PDF and native file formats in this project. So I could have some some um, Word, Excel files in this particular project as well as PDF documents. Um, I create the project a new name. It will go to your default location and I will create that project. Okay, so a binder project is where you might have um, documents or work papers if you weren't using advanced work paper management for the, the web from Explorer and we might go back up I'll get something that is not a PDF file if I find my right document I don't know we might have a letter here okay I can move that letter up to the top so in a binder project um, when I created this project I added an, a whole folder um, initially. That folder had in there some documents in there and I've also added a word letter. I could have some Excel files. This process here then organises what, what order I'm going to look at this in because I will be making a single PDF document of the contents of what's in here. I have the choice to convert this to a PDF or I have the choice to leave that into its native document file. What I can do is when I make this binder, I'm going to create a single PDF binder and I'm going to make it. I can give the binder a name. It's going to list a table of contents for me in Word and it's going to allow me to edit that table of contents before it finalises. So the idea is here that you could have a whole heap of financials or, or anything else that you want to do, put that together in your own contents. You can create a brand new page numbering for all the contents that you have in that document and you can go and edit this as you need. Save it. and it will create a single PDF with a table of contents of the contents that you had and in this case any files that wasn't converted to the um, PDF itself allows me to go and open that document directly in its native source. So it's very good for archiving purposes um, if you're doing web paper projects it could also be used as, as it, what I've sort of got here is an example here of, of how you want to do your physical binding of documents of multiple tax returns, etc., into a, a physical binder. Then you can do that and then that goes through. You can see you can set your own bookmarks and settings which you can go through. Um, you have numbering, page numbering that you can set you can change your document properties, you can put different headers and footers as you need to um, and what your default settings are. So it's just taking the concept um, as our third document mode um, to an extended function. Uh, 
Okay, so that was our third mode, is the binder projects. I'm not going to change or save that binder. You'll notice that also binder projects also have um, a different document um, descript, uh, document. Uh, what is it called? Dot .bdr. So a dot .pop is a organizer project. It's kind of like a shrinked up version. It doesn't have all the individual documents as, as big files anymore. It's kind of encrypted into this dot .pop file. And same with a BDR, a binder file, they're a lot smaller. So it makes sharing of those projects. If you're in, in um, one of your organizers and you want to share a project, it makes that a lot quicker by, by also sharing that um, through your homepage. You can send it, you can email a project from one person to the next. Um, it'll be very small to send over an email um, file. One of the questions I did have also is whether you could change it from the black colour here um, when you, you're doing your search and your editing and protecting. You can do that when you search for something. I might check all of those. You can change your fill colour here. I'll make that one green. Mark the results and apply the change. You, you can change that colour quite easily there. Um, hopefully I explained that yes you can email binder projects, you can email any of these um, organiser projects or binder projects by simply using the home key and emailing it. Oh, actually, if I go back my mistake. So the email is emailing the document. If I go to the backstage view, if I want to send this whole organiser project to somebody, I can share via email, send as attachment. Maybe I'm mistaking with the share option. Sorry, the way to share it will be to open up your My Documents. You will have My Organisers and you can just right click on your POP file and send that through via your email to share that um, file to somebody else on your email. But you'll see here they're quite, quite small. Okay, how are we going for more questions? Another question, if you send a binder project or an organiser project to a recipient and they don't have PDF docs, can they open it? No, they won't be able to open it. So sending off one of these .pop files or BDR files, you need to have advanced, uh, sorry, PDF docs at the other end to open those. Just showing those comment pages again. Okay. Let's come back and have a look at what else we have. Um, okay, can you edit a document, add, remove words, paragraph, pages, etc.? Yes, you can. You can go into your review area. You can put shapes through that. If that whole section I don't want to see on the document, I can highlight that and I can fill that colour with white, which essentially removes that. I could also change the colour of the line, so essentially then that page is, is no longer has that copyright. Not that we'd be doing that on those sort of documents. Um, and I can also add in a typewriter comment, if I find my comment, to 
six comment. So we can add a comment there by typing it in and I can see here that it's opened up the different fonts and the different styles that I have for that particular document, uh, sorry, that particular uh, item. Okay. Can I now highlight this particular comment? Maybe that was our question. No, it doesn't look like I can highlight that particular comment, but what I could do is put a comment flag next to it, which was this one here. So by inserting that comment and putting it there and then putting in and I think I can change the colour of those by using that and applying that or opening up the properties. Okay, so there's some, some basic text editing in here. Um, we can also Oh, insert shapes, got recently used things here and come back to our home. Okay, the other output options you can see when you file print or save, you'll see them up here as well and you can apply those to the whole, whole documents and you can also go in and change your page headers and footers and numbering sets as per your requirements. If I come back, we're going to just finish off with the upgrade. Some of you may have already installed PDF Docs version 4 and you may not have cleaned out your version 3 organisers before you did the upgrade. Okay? Our recommendation would be to advise the users before you do the upgrade that if you have any organisers Clearing out should be cleared out before you upgrade. Okay. Um, previously and you're starting fresh. If you haven't done that, how do I go and import stuff that was sitting in an old organiser? If you go so file open, you'll see in here PDF3 organisers under the file open menu. That is really referring to advanced docs. It will go and open an old version of a, a view of advanced docs on your machine. So a little bit slow to open that because it's opening up another application. You'll see in here that we do have oh, your old documents that you have here and it, what you can do is you can select whichever documents that you want in your organiser and it says select the documents, copy and then go to PDF Docs 4 and paste. So you'll see that there's only the copy to clipboard option available and you can open other projects if you had other projects, so copy to clipboard close that and if I go back and I paste before or after it will grab those documents and put them into your new PDF Docs 4 organiser.
So as I said, we recommend all users clear their organisers before upgrading. You can import them by using the file open and import so that you don't have any miscommunication. It would be wise for that to have happened before you did the upgrade and that the technical team had read the installation notes and, and technical guides for that um, communication to occur before you complete your upgrade. The documents that do come as part of the installation are very handy and very useful. From a technical point of view, there's the Read Me First and the Installation Guide. So if there's things that you need to push out in firm-wide settings, I recommend that you do read the Installation Guide. It talks about the changes to the server.ini file and the Central Config Guide. From an end user's perspective, you've got your Getting Started Guide and the Advanced Users Guide. They're both available from the little question mark help item in the application once you've installed it. There is release notes 4.1 and 4.2 which are shown in a grid view that tell you all the changes. They're not a graphical representation view. We have the webinars that are recorded. Um, this webinar will be available on the website and I will direct everybody to that location in an email to advise you where you can download this webinar. We have the e-learning module and then there is also um, the technical guides which talks about the document management system integrations, security configurations, all the settings that you may want to push out are all XML files, so stationary settings, watermarks, um, user option settings are all XML based um, and so there is a guide that goes through that particular process. There's also an integration matrix of everything that we integrate with. If you're using OCR as an additional license as well, um, then it talks about it will integrate and allow you to export documents back to Word and Excel um, as long as they're Office 2010 or greater. If you need more information where to get help, we have um, some consultants that are more than happy to help with any technical deployment assistance, i.e. all the configuration and the XML guides, you need assistance with that, then we can help you with that. And we can also do tailored training. So if you've already used some functions, um, you just want more people to use them. If you've never used Binder projects before and want some more help on how to set those up, create your own index and create your own index look and feel, then we can certainly do some tailored training for that. The email for that is apsconsulting at reckon.com. That pretty much concludes our, our topics of what we were going to cover to get you guys started. Whilst the screens can look a little bit new, um, it really doesn't take you that long once you've started using the application to get familiar with the new ribbon look and feel. Everything seems to be fairly intuitive of what you want to do and available at your fingertips. Um, as I said, the screen uh, and the speed of, of things is certainly a lot quicker. Um, if there is also any other issues, you can email us at support. Okay, I will leave the session open if there is any questions. Um, you can raise your hand or type them in the question pane. I do thank you for your time today. Um, I hope you found that worthwhile and I will be around for the next five minutes. As I said, if there's any further questions, please ask. Uh, if you would like to be unmuted, let me know and we can unmute you and, and talk or we can take it offline. So thank you very much. Um, if you do need to leave, then please feel free to leave. I have a question. Can I open Advanced Docs 3 Binder in PDF Docs 4? I will just double check. The binder files themselves have changed, so they used to be different different structure underneath. If I open up PDF Docs, open, I 
just going to open up the PDF organizer because I have just an organizer there, but I think I can open. I'm not sure because that option there isn't available, which is opening a binder project. Binder projects did change in their file structure and I probably have my old binders here as well if I go back to something that is quite old. They're all the new ones. I may have to get back to you on that one. Um, because the file formats have changed, I think you may need to, to deal with your binders before you, do, you move across to PDF Docs version 4. So I will follow that up and, and send out an email. We'll also put that on one of the frequently asked questions KB articles so that um, people can search for those items as well. So if there is anything um, that we add to that list from, from questions that we receive in the webinars, we will create KB articles in our support area for you to, to open those. I will just open up the website where you will see these items if I just minimise that for a minute. Da, 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 da. On our new Reckon website there is up and coming webinars pages and recorded webinars. So you will be able to pick up recordings from previous um, webinars as well. Just see where we've got that. Can't see any other questions coming through. As I said, you can fire them off. And uh, we will go there. So under the accountants, uh, APS section, there is a client area and you will have Reckon up and coming webinars. So if you have other people that need to attend this webinar, a live webinar, you can still register. The recorded webinars page for anything that has been presented, today's will be recorded and will be added to this page so that you'll be able to grab the PDF docs webinar from here also see you will have previously recorded webinars in this section. We have a question or a hand raised. If uh, Matthew needs to, to use the phone, you feel free to ask me a question. Okay, it doesn't look like there is any other questions coming through, so I will end the session. Thank you everybody for your attendance. Um, if you do need to email me directly, you can also email apstraining at reckon.com. Thank you very much.